Well folks, welcome to the latest video in the series of buying vintage fishing reels. Okay, so I've got a new batch of reels in and I just thought I'd go through them and show you what was going on. Um, this is a straightforward fly reel. It doesn't have any branding, but it's of reasonable quality. I mean, you see here it's got brass foot on it um, and it's got nice brass fittings. That's always very good if you're trying to sell something. If something looks nice and uh, traditional. Uh, so we took the tip out so if you notice that this, this reel spins very freely but if you notice that just there you can just see how the face of the reel is set down about a millimeter and a half and that's because there's something going wrong so if I bring it up a millimeter you can see how the reel sticks and um, I, have, I have to actually get behind it and push it to get the reel top out now there's nothing fundamentally wrong with this reel um, and I, I would guess that um, the ratchet and that's okay and the bearings and that's okay that what we have is a little bit of corrosion around the rim um, when fishing reels are designed <coughs> typically this gap here uh, around the edge is less than half a millimeter and the reason for that is um, you don't want to get your line stuck in the parts when you're trying to use the reel so they make the gap small deliberately uh, unfortunately that means that if you do anything like get a bit of corrosion um, or you dink the side of the reel uh, it means your reel doesn't function anymore and it has to be good, fixed really uh, effectively so this is altogether a reel that's got great bones but um, it needs a bit of work and what I, what I will probably do with this is I'll probably polish it all up um, take, all, take all the paint off. I might repaint it or I might just keep it polished because they do look quite nice with just straightforward polished alloy and we've got some nice brass bits there to show up too so um, the, other, the other issue I think is that the reason this is sitting too low is because there's possibly a washer missing underneath there and that'll need to be replaced too Okay, so the next reel I'm going to show you is this. Uh, this is in a furry case. <laughs> and um, this is a, a Hardy of Alnwick Unica, and it's a fairly late model. It's not particularly vintage. It is vintage, but it's not um, It's not as old as some that you can get hold of. But you can see the, the quality of the alloy and the quality of the paint on the Hardy reels now. It just isn't there. If you compare the Farlow's reel from the same age, uh, the build quality is whew, 10 times better than this and if you buy a Young's reel from the 50s these are the black ones that I've showed you in one of the other videos they are far better quality than this and they will last far longer and they're much more solid it has a slater latch in the middle <coughs> and this particular reel is you can see it's got a, a reversible ratchet there and a reversible top guard now this particular reel um, doesn't have a lot of wear on it, so it's still a good reel, it'll still sell for good money once it's uh, renovated. I'll probably do a similar job on it to the uh, the last one that I showed you. Um, but feel how light it is. And this particular reel is designed for use with um, modern rods like carbon fibre um, and graphite which are very very light. <coughs> And also, I think you would probably be able to use this on hollow fiber too. Although people, unless you're using vintage rods, people don't usually use hollow fiber very much, and um, they don't buy them vintage either very much either, to be honest. But uh, so what I have here is quite an interesting reel. Um, it's uh, a Fluga Summit, and it does actually have the instructions with it, which is nice, uh, which adds to the value somewhat. And uh, in addition to that. The little Fluga Summit also has this, which uh, is the spanner for taking the reel apart. And it's actually a Fluga part. Okay, the spanner is marked Fluga on it, and it says Little Giant. So it's a standard Fluga part. Now, this particular reel is interesting because um, it, it, it has bearings on it, which are made of agate. And you can see there, um, it looks at first glance as if this is a bit of bling that's been put on there you know and that's a modern word I guess that probably wouldn't have existed back in the 20s and the reel has been 
beautifully engraved all the way around, or, or stamp engraved anyway. <coughs> I don't know if it's hand engraved. And on the other side too, so it looks absolutely fantastic. And it's got, you can see here, it's got these agate, red agate bearings on either side. Now these, although these do have a blingy effect, there, and they add to the overall look of the reel. It's a nice classical reel. Um, it actually is a bearing. That's what it's for. It's it's the main bearing for the uh, the spindle in the centre there, and um, you adjust this, and you can adjust this. You see, it's got a null nut on it, so that you're about a quarter turn away from it being too tight, and that allows you a little your little centerpiece to spin freely and, and beautifully on, on a hard surface. Now, in the 1800s, most fishing reels were actually made by watchmakers and clockmakers and sometimes jewellers. And um, this reflects effectively a technique that's used in clockmaking. If you buy a very good pocket watch or, or, a, or, a, watch, or a wind up watch or a clock, <coughs> quite often they had um, a statement on the front that said 16 jewels. What it actually means is that the little bearings that the spindles sit on inside the watch are sitting on a cup which is made of sapphire, usually sapphire. But there are, I mean, sometimes you can get you can get other other types of bearings, uh, and that that kind of, um, in a way, that kind of reflects the heritage of this reel because it, it, this is built very similar to the, um, the original Victorian reels. And the original Georgian reels, which would have been made by a clockmaker, <clears throat> because they had the exact skills to uh, to reproduce that. So anyway, this particular reel is a, is a used. It's used for flat casting and, and generally sea sea work. It's got a rotatable grease hole, which is pretty unusual actually. You don't usually see them like that. They usually have sprung nipple, and um, under there there's a spare part <coughs> for the front of the winder. And it's got a winder to make sure that the line winds uh, evenly onto the reel. And you can see as you as you wind it, the, the winder moves along. And then when you get to the end, it comes back in the other direction. Now that is pretty clever. <laughs> I have to admit, I've never seen anything like that before. It is pretty clever. Um, this here, this is. There's a particular problem with these reels when you cast with them. If the rod isn't damped properly, it boinks backwards and forwards. And it makes all the line on the reel get splayed up uh, in, in a really tangly kind of a way. It's pretty annoying. It's one of the reasons I don't like using these personally. Um, and that is is supposed to damp that off. So you're supposed to be able to control it with that. I don't know whether you can or not, but you're supposed to be able to. On the other end, we've got a ratchet, which um, is a bit it's a bit warm, but it is working. And uh, later on I will take this particular reel apart and we'll do a little project. Um, we'll take, take, take everything off it and show how it comes it comes away. Okay, so that's my little summit reel which has just come in. And that will be in the shop later on too. And that's a beautiful little collector's piece for display. Uh, it looks fantastic um, already. And uh, I haven't done anything to it yet. <laughs> okay. Right, so the next reel that's come in is this. This is a little uh, wooden fly type reel. It's got Milborough on the back of it, which was pretty reasonable make in its day. Um, uh, the, the other the other make, I forget what it's called now, there's, there was um, two that sounded the same, and one was very cheap and the other one was, <laughs> was okay. Oh, actually, sorry, you're right, um, Mil Milborough. Milborough was the cheap one, and it was Millwoods, which is the, the quite good make. Anyway, this is a it's fly reel, and you can see, what, if you look at my other videos, there's a video about hard grease, and you can see there the way that's turning. There's some pretty hard grease in there. <laughs> I think that's, I think that's kind of the problem. And so we'll have to fix this. And we'll uh, need to look at that, and we'll need to get the hard grease out. There's no ratchet on this reel, so it's a pretty straightforward reel. Now another reel that's just come in is this, um, and I was talking earlier on about uh, reels that were made in the Georgian era and the early Victorian era where they would have been made by a clockmaker. This is exactly that type of reel, essentially um, the very earlier, the, the earlier, earlier reels than this. You could get a, a, a clamp foot 
and you could get a tube foot and, you, and there's, there's, there was a, a spike foot as well where you put the bolt right through the rod and tied up a wing nut and you could also get, get this type of foot which was probably the most popular I mean, it is the one that's taken off and is used today um, now then this is a crank wind and if you remember what I was saying earlier on about um, the line getting stuck in, in, in between the bits of the reel and that's why they make them with a really close tolerance well what happens with these reels is the line gets stuck around the handle sometimes and gets in a tangle and so this particular design uh, lasted a fair while but eventually it was superseded by reels that had handles that don't really snag or tangle um, <coughs> like the last one I just showed you in fact and the early, the early reels that were made like this were actually made with screws you could take out and the more commercial ones from the Victorian period like this one in fact um, were made with rivets and it's usually the cheaper reels that are made with rivets the more expensive ones like the Philo's ones they usually, usually, usually take them apart you can take them apart usually and this one, you ought to get the foot off this one um, but this will be cleaned up and um, this will come up for sale too later on because there's nothing actually wrong with it <clears throat> another reason these reels were phased out is you don't have a lot of um, diameter for leverage here so if you've got all your line wound off and you get a fish on it um, you, you haven't got much <laughs> to get the fish back in again um, you have to crank it pretty fast when you when you're right at the at the bottom of the spool there and that is a problem this particular reel now also does have an issue here you can see there and when that screws tightened up that'll probably go away and uh, these these crank arms can be straightened too so there's another vintage fishing reel for you um, Hope you enjoyed that one. Now there are two more I'm going to show you, which we've just got through. Okay, these are little fluger reels, and um, these are the 80 yard model. And um, there's an 80, 60, and I think there's a 120. The 120 is a bit rarer, as I understand it. Um, and these are really nice, actually. The uh, this one wants cleaning up. It's it's got a bit of bit of a hard grease problem as well. Uh, but it's otherwise in working order uh, there's a little ratchet on it which you can hear is working oh, it, it's, ooh, it's way sticky with grease that so uh, that needs to be cleaned up and sorted out and put up for sale and then there's another one which is pretty well identical um, it, the ratchet isn't working quite so well on that and it's going to need some repair and when you turn it over you can see the reason why <laughs> it's got a missing switch on it, so this needs a little bit of work to re to repair that. Um, we'll probably make probably make one of these and then attach it and solder it on or something like that, um, and repair the reel up. And um, these fluger reels are uh, generally they are marked on the foot here with the bulldog mark and uh, fluger made in the USA. Um, fluger, you see these on, on sale on eBay, and sometimes people say they're Scandinavian. Well, they're not Scandinavian actually. They're, <laughs> they're actually um, a very close copy of the Meiselback, which is also an American reel. And um, the the Meiselback petered out in the early 1900. And this particular reel, it may well be that Fluger bought the design. I'm not sure, but this particular reel went on to about 1940. Uh, they made it until, and you can also get a nickel plated version of it um, but they are a genuine pretty good quality American antique uh, so that's that's kind of interesting, it's also in real parlance it's called a skelly which which means skeleton because it's got these vents in it and these vents are there because when people fly fished in 1800 uh, they used silk and the silk needs to dry and so one of the ways that they helped to do that was to have a skeleton reel which allows the air to pass through it okay okay that's the end of this little video about buying vintage fisher reels thanks very much for watching folks bye